Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 2nd Special Council, Council Meeting. The City of Parksville recognizes the people of the Coast Salish Nations and their territory upon which we gather with gratitude. Just before I start tonight, I left in every councillor's mailbox uh, an article that I picked up in the uh, Times columnist today called Municipal Governments Matter Most. And I'll just read you a quick paragraph from that article. You can read it. It's much more interesting but, than, this, than this paragraph, but it's very, very, uh, very, very uh, appropriate for me to read this tonight. It says that if you think about it, many of the policies and programs that most affect our well-being and quality of life come from local government. Clean water, sewer, sanitation, roads and public transport, police and fire services, parks and recreation, urban planning, building inspection, education and libraries. The list goes on. So if municipalities in Canada and around the world are to assume the vital role they need to play in improving well-being, reducing poverty, addressing climate change, and other major issues, they need to be recognized as legitimate and important levels of government. They need a seat at the national and global tables, and they need the powers and resources, such as including taxing powers for sales or even income taxes to play their part effectively. After all, municipal governments matter most. So we'll start off on that note. So good evening, Mrs. Lovegrove. And we're going to turn the, I did pronounce your right name properly, didn't I? Yes, I did. Councillor, Councillor Powell's trying to give me a hard time here. So I'm gonna ask you to, um, to the, go over the 2017 to 2021 draft provisional financial plan. And council uh, can either ask questions during or after the presentation. And then we'll go to the uh, we'll go to the gallery after that. So, Mrs. Lovegrove, please proceed. And I hate the fact that it's a cold and stormy night. Otherwise, perhaps more people would be here. Thank you, Your Worship. Welcome, everyone, to the 2017-2021 draft provisional financial plan presentation. For each of the funds, the three funds we have: the general fund, the water utility fund, and the sewer utility fund, we'll. Right into we would be looking at the building blocks of each fund, any future year's spending packages that were brought forward in 2016, any budget adjustments since the last budget financial plan we've uh, had, and the 2017 spending packages. We will look at the 20-year capital plan, then the 2017 provisional financial plan for each of the funds, and then the accumulated surplus projections for each of the funds. So we'll start off with the general fund. The building blocks for the general fund are tax increases of 4% for each of the full five years, 2017 to 2021. The inflation rates we've used in our model are 2% for 2017 and 2.5% 2 in 2018 to 2021. This basically is just a reminder for Council. Last year in our uh, financial plan presentations, we brought, to get, brought forward some spending packages. These spending packages had items in them that affected future years. Uh, this is just a review of those spending packages. So for 2017, we had an IT summer student, an emergency program coordinator, a fire department assistant, uh, 75th anniversary celebration for the fire department, a paid call system for the fire department, and a parks and trails master plan. In 2018, we had an HR advisor and an engineering technician. These two items actually have been moved forward to 2017 and are part of this provisional plan for 2017. In 2020, we had a demolition of the Shelley Road building. We also had some capital items that affected future years. We had several in the community uh, park in 2017 and 2018, 2019. Pretty much all of the capital ones were community park um, projects. In 2024, we also brought in the all weather field. And again, just to remind you, we had $2 million in the budget for this. We anticipated a grant for a million dollars for this and 
basically, I think there was a, a long-term debt borrowing of a million dollars for this too, but that will be decided in the future as more grants become available. And it is a little bit outside of our um, financial plan, but just to give you guys a reminder. So the budget adjustments for 2017, these are the changes that are over and above last year's provisional plan. So this year we've included revenues from the uh, proceeds of sale of assets, mainly the disposition of the fire department trucks. We haven't had revenue showing for this uh, in previous years, but we have decided to add it in as we usually do trade these vehicles in and show it in their financial statements. On the expenditure side, we did have an item, uh, research for a records management system, $4,500. Uh, since this presentation was put together, that item has actually been moved over to 2018, but it is still in the five-year plan, but not in this current year. Um, an emergency program website has uh, been included. That was not in prior computer software contracts. This is not just contracts, but it's also, it's the, also the internet um, facilities for the city hall. Computer hardware was increased. The HR advisor was moved forward from 2018, as I previously mentioned. The HR co-op student is in there. The engineering technician position, again, as I previously mentioned, moved forward from 2018 and emergency lighting packages for the fire department vehicles. In prior years, this lighting package was included in the capital cost of the vehicles, but as there are a separate item and can be reused on other vehicles if necessary, they have been separated and included in the operating part. Thank you, Your Worship. So these, are, are those negative signs in front of those numbers and that mean that they're, they're taken out of the 2017 budget? Is that, because on the page previously, there's no, on the page previous in the presentation, future spending packages, So these are all additions to this year's budget? Correct. Or, or, or the 2018, they're, part, they're additions to the financial plan. To the financial plan, thank you. Maybe in future, instead of calling them budget adjustments, we could call them uh, cost, cost Bob brought forward or something else. Councillor Salter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you, I just have a question. So, for the um, fire department, the um, emergency light, which are 15,000, they're in on the 2017 and 2018, so it's 30,000 total. Or the, through the mayor to Councillor Salter, yes, um, as the fire, the pickup trucks at the fire department are turned over every three years. Um, for the first two years, it'll be 15,000 for the one this year, for 2017, 15,000 for the next truck that is turned over in 2018. And then three years down the road, there'll be a $5,000 upgrade, basically, to the next lot of truck and their lighting that will be upgraded. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. The capital budget adjustments, um, we had a duplicate entry of the bulk fuel station. It was listed in two places, so we removed that, and that is a reduction of $30,000. The electronics documents and records management has been retaken out from 2017 and moved to 2019. Increase in the uh, fire department truck prices going forward of approximately $8,400 per, these are the pickup trucks that the chiefs and the assistant chiefs uh, drive. And again, computer hardware of $7,300. We also had some new spending packages that came forward. Um, one was uh, council chamber chairs. This is a city portion. We estimate at $6,700. As 
uh, items here in the form are cost shared between all the partners in the building. We have listed the city portion only. Councillor. Thank you, Your Worship. Have you heard if the other partners would also like new chairs? I haven't heard that at, at all, not yet. Mrs. Comis, do, do we know anything more about the other the other players? Well, they'll be approached, I gather, between now and the next budget meeting. Okay. We also have a new administrative assistant, which will be split between the bylaw department and the emergency program. We've, there's been a request for the Tempest user interface upgrade internet for city facilities, an increase in hours for the part-time accountant that was uh, new to the budget uh, in 2016, um, front landscaping re and requests for the fire department parking area, um, the fire department front door and intercom and keyless entry system, and the fire department also are requesting a forcible entry prop had a request for the Alberni Highway Christmas lights. In the community park, we've had a request for the green gym, the food truck plaza, fencing for the tennis courts, and the Beach Fest Plaza area. And there's also a request for the Springwood sidewalk connections. That has to do with the new the new uh, walkway from or the new trail from Springwood Park to to Coombs Country Market. Is that the same same item or is it another item? I can speak to that, Your Worship. This is uh, connectivity to the around the tennis courts that uh, would bring it up from Despard Road. So it's essentially on the other side of the parking lot. We did some of the um, um, sidewalk that connects to the Springwood El uh, Middle School Elementary. And then this would be just the remainder of it. Of these spending packages, Council was provided with a listing and the details of the spending packages in the handout that you were received uh, last week. Councillor Powell. Thank you, Worship. If you go back to page, I just want to clarify, page six, computer software. And did you not say that internet was also included in that figure? Yep. And then we have internet again on page on this page is that included in that cost or is this extra can you talk about the two different if they are actually it is a duplication i do apologize for that as i'm going through the presentation now i see it's a duplication because yes well actually it should come out of the budget adjustments that should be re reduced by twenty-seven thousand because it was a special spending package Thank you, Your Worship. You referenced that these, uh, these, this up, the page that you had up there before, the budget adjustments, you referenced that the detail was in the packages that were previously su supplied to us? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the package that was previously supplied to us showed the uh, internet for the city being at 22700 not 27000 Okay, um, I'll have to check into that. Um, I was given the 27000 to include in that, but I will check on that for you. S sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, because I believe that's somewhere noted somewhere else in the package as well as, as, as coming in at uh, 27000 I know it's, in the, it's, it's, it's on page 40, 41. Pardon me? Mark? 
Director of Finance. Thank you, Worship. If I may, uh, yeah, the amount on the spending package is 22.7, and so I believe the amount on the uh, presentation here is just a typo, and it should be 22,700 um, on the new spending package, not 27,000. Does that sound right, Pam? Councillor Rhodes. Same question. But this time, with respect to the chairs, the package that we had had the chairs coming in at 13,000, and uh, the handout that was given us tonight has it coming in at 6,700. Your Worship, through to Councillor Oates, the 13,000 is anticipated to be the full cost of the chairs that would be shared between all the partners, with the city cost coming in at 6,700. The partners again are the school board and the VIU. And VIU. So, yeah. what was the total cost again? Thirteen thousand. So why wouldn't it be? My math isn't very good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the uh, well, I need to have confidence in this material. So on page thirty-five of the package that was previously provided to us. It said that uh, the cost was $13,000, and there's no mention in there about it being shared with uh, anybody else. So I know it's been explained to us tonight at 6700 but I, I want to know which document, and when I go home and read all this stuff, which one I should be looking at, and and why, if it's $6,700 up there, is it $13,000 down here? Mrs. Comas. Um, yes, Your Worship. The spending package that we submit has the full cost of the project in it, which is $13,000. Which is this, this package? Which here. is that package. When we prepare the budget, we um, include the cost of our the cost for the city to do it. Now, if the partners are unwilling to share in the cost, then council has a choice of paying the full amount or, or, not. or not. Okay. Uh, Councillor Patterson, then Councillor Salter, and then Councillor Beal, and then we'll go back to Councillor Oates. That's all right, That's all right Your Worship. Uh, her Director of Finance uh, answered my question beside me. Uh, Councillor Salter. Well, I just want to say with regard to the chairs, on page two of the original package that we received, um, under spending packages AD1, it says council chamber chairs, city portion, 6,700. And so, yeah, in the back it did say the 13, but here it does, it kind of explains that that's the city portion of the cost of those chairs. Councillor Beal, Councillor Oates. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, uh, with respect to the internet services, we're being asked to approve 22700 for that as well. And I understand that uh, the first line in the explanation of the package is that we received the internet service through cooperation with the school district. Are we not cooperating with the school district anymore, or what, what's, what's up with that? Ms. Ms. Keeler. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lefebvre. Through you to Councillor Oates. Uh, the IT department indicated that we were receiving the internet services um, by working with the school district, but we were not actually paying for them uh, for the last few years, and so we were benefiting from that reduced cost, but from now on we were informed earlier this year that that would not be continuing. So we have to provide our own internet services. So the um, IT coordinator budgeted for a setup fee and then an ongoing monthly payment that we are now going to have to pay if we want to have internet services. Has there been any consideration in partnering with these other groups here? Because it seems to me we've got us, the school district, VIU, the library. There must be some efficiencies that could be derived by having a common internet provider. Yes, I believe that was how it was working in the past, but we were told that that was not going to be continuing, and the school district has proceeded and got uh, their own service at this point. So um, 
I wasn't given any kind of nitty gritty details on why it was no longer working, um, but I could certainly find that out for the next council uh, budget meeting next week. Okay. If, if there's a need uh, in looking at, for example, things like the chairs for either the mayor or the CAO to contact their counterparts, uh, let's do that sooner than later. Okay, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Your Worship. On page two of our documents, the internet for city facilities, it reads 27,002, so that will need to be corrected. One, one question for me on page eight with the fire department, they've got three items that total $32,000, the parking area, front landscaping, the front landscaping, the front door intercom, keyless entry, and the forcible entry. Uh, how, I guess I'll ask the question as simply as I can. How, how important is that? How, is it a, you wanna come up to the microphone? Acting Chief. You can you can sit. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just to clarify, which which one are you specifically? Okay. Okay. So. Okay, I'll I'll address first, uh, Your Worship, the uh, the front parking area. Uh, one of the things, uh, speaking with um, uh, our Chief Norris, um, is that. The way the parking lot is currently configured is, is uh, doesn't really work well for public access. Um, it's confusing. We have people parking in front of bay doors, etc. Um, and aesthetically, while it's pleasing, uh, it's actually becoming quite a chore to also maintain um, because of the, the, the rock landscaping, etc. So uh, we're looking at trying to get that changed so it's a little easier to maintain for for uh, the City Works crews, as well as it's easier to navigate for the general public of the way it's situated. Um, as far as the, um, the the forcible entry prop, one of the things that's happening now is that uh, because of the, um, the way th things are going in society, people are tending to uh, be much more secure in not only their businesses, uh, but through uh, also through um, in their homes. So, that produces a big problem for us if we have to get into a building. Um, and so what we're doing is, while we can, uh, we've made some props, the breaching tools that are required, um, it's very, very uh, difficult for us to actually build that, uh, which is why we've elected to buy a manufacturer specific one, which will allow us to train our firefighters uh, to be able to do these jobs effectively. Because we actually do, uh, and have done in the past, forcible entry for BC Ambulance as well as the RCP. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Beal, you have a question for the Acting Chief? Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Worship, and um, through to uh, um, Chief Tyrone, hey? Thank you. Um, regarding the uh, forcible entry prop, I I'm just curious to know uh, if, if there has been any consideration into purchasing something to share among a few departments. I, I don't know how frequently one would need to practice with this. Uh, so on the one side, I am curious to know if this could be, for instance, shared with the Qualcomm or some neighboring fire department. Uh, the other thing is, is there uh, an opportunity for some revenue generating if, uh, if such a, a device was purchased for training? Uh, would this be on site at the fire hall or would it be out on the training grounds um, in the industrial park. Okay, thank you, uh, thank through you your Chief. worship, to uh, Councillor Beal. Uh, there, the opportunity, uh, Qualcomm does have one, uh, which we share. The issue is that these things are incredibly heavy, uh, so we have to either subcontract someone to go and pick them up, which is usually a towing company, or um, a public works vehicle, if they're available, to go and pick that up and then bring it for that purpose. Um, as you're aware, we're building the, the training ground uh, and the training tower, uh, which is where the prop would be uh, permanently located. Um, with the options, uh, I know speaking with uh, Chief Norris, uh, that we can start looking at programs for high-rise, which includes forcible entry. So that could be incorporated into a program in the future for us. 
Most of the props, of course, when we share costs, we also share maintenance costs. So that could end up, in the long run, costing us more money by doing that, possibly. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Lovegrove, move on. We'll move it on. In future years, the Fire Department Assistant Spending Package that was introduced last year has been amended to include a new Fire Department Assistant for every three years for the next foreseeable future. So in 2020, we would have another Fire Department Assistant, and in 2023, we would have another Fire Department Assistant added to the budget. Thank you. We had two capital spending packages for 2017. Um, works adjacent to development on the roadside for $100,000, and an electrical and gas connection to the public workshop for $535,000. Councillor Oates, you probably have the same question I do. Councillor Oates, Councillor Salter, and then Councillor Beale. Uh, yes, actually go to someone. Councillor Salter. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just finding the amount um, for an electrical and gas connection to a shop, uh, $535,000 seems excessive to me for hookups. So I'm wondering if someone can maybe just uh, clarify that for, for me. Mr. Squire. Yes, uh, through your worship. Um, this is the electrical and gas connection. Um, with the sequencing of the construction down at the Public Works Yard, essentially we have to have a, um, with the new shop and the preparation for an emergency backup generator, what you're essentially doing is bringing in a brand new electrical service and a brand new gas service along the north side of the property line to service all three buildings. One would be the existing building, the new shop, and then the water treatment plant. This is the cost for the actual shop portion of it. Um, electrical connections uh, are fairly expensive. Uh, these are three phase. Uh, you're dealing with copper. You could save money and go to aluminum cable, but uh, it's, it's, it is expensive and it does reflect. Again, it's a budget. There, there is a, a certain, probably, a, I would say, over 20% contingency on top of that, but uh, the real cost we expect to be lower, but this is, um, it's a buried infrastructure as well, so it's not overhead. This is something you excavate, um, install and replace, and then the finished grade, finished surface would be asphalt too, so that all that price reflects that amount of work. Follow up? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and to you again. Are you saying this is for one building or for all of the buildings, uh, bringing in the gas and the electrical? I thought, you, I thought I heard you say you're bringing in the gas and electrical for all of them. You're getting a generator. So are all of these things uh, part of this cost? Or is this cost only for the electrical, the three-phase, and the gas connection to the shop? Like, exactly what, what is this 535? The five, through your worship, the, the, the amount is actually the portion for the shop. All those will be in common trench. Uh, I had to break out that cost for the shop because of the um, type, the, the tendering. Originally, the water treatment plant was gonna go forward, which provoked or started this whole um, having to have a new connection. But uh, it, it's anticipated that the actual shop will go forward, so I had to break out the monies that was originally allocated and put it in for the shop. So this, to answer your question, um, this is for the shop portion of it. Okay, so Councillor Goats. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I wanted to, are you up next? I'm sorry. Councillor Beal. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're both on the list, right? Okay, good. Uh, my question was related to the um, Engineering 01, the work adjacent to development and construction. And um, I understand the request there is for $100,000. And as I understand it, it's to have money there that would go to um, 
so there would actually be a contract in place so that something could be done if, if it comes up uh, during a development and there's some work to be done on the road. Now, I'm curious is um, at present, if something comes up, is uh, the money to cover such repairs coming out of surplus and or, and if so, is it possible to actually look at reducing our surplus by some amount if we have something like this in place? Mr. Squire. Um, if I may, if I may, Your Worship, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, this work uh, works adjacent to, uh, to development roads. Uh, we we've have had money in the past for works adjacent for water, and I believe we have some for sanitary. Yes, uh, that we have used. Uh, um, an, an example would be if a if a development comes in, for instance, uh, that requires uh, some improvements. Um, generally, our if they come in, for instance, in, in under existing zoning, we're only we're only allowed to ask for certain things, and uh, um, for instance, um, it's typical that a development would, in terms of roadworks, would be responsible for roadworks up to the center line of the road. Uh, in doing so, um, there is the potential, depending on the condition of the road, that it would make sense at that point to do the other side of the road too. Um, in the past, we haven't had enough money in, in that uh, realm or to, to draw on to, to address those situations. So that's what this that's what this would be for. So it's it's somewhat tied to uh, development and, and, and the amount of development going on, um, and, and it allows us some flexibility. Uh, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense if we have a, a developer go in and, and do their half of the road, and then if the other half is in fairly bad condition to have half a road that's reasonable condition and the other half is, is not is not a reasonable condition so it gives us the option of using that money to finish a road properly from one side to the other in, in that instance it's an example council roads thank you worship on uh, page 44 of our previously supplied package in the explanation for the request it says that the city experienced more than one of these situations in 2017. I imagine that's a typo and it mean, meant to be 2016. Uh, that, that would be correct, not 2017. Could, could you provide us an, an example? Um, uh, one example was, for instance, we had a, uh, I can't remember the, the name of the, the subdivision, we had a three lot subdivision in the west end of town. Um, the uh, uh, developer uh, to service their property were required to do a certain amount of water work. Um, but it made sense uh, in terms of um, they had a contractor there. Um, the prices looked really good, um, like the unit prices for their work, and it was beneficial for us to loop the water main to improve the water uh, quality in that whole area while they were doing the work, because they were also doing some road work there. So we spent some money and, and, and did an actual uh, loop the water system there to, to improve uh, the, whole, um, the whole water quality for that end of town. And uh, to, to leave that, uh, we would have to come back and rip up, uh, rip up some roadworks to to do it in the future. So it didn't make any sense to leave it. We were able to draw on that fund, like the the water works adjacent, to finish that off. Couldn't uh, the engineering department have come before council at that time and uh, detailed the opportunity for some savings by doing it then? And couldn't council then at that time just approve it? Because it seems to me uh, this is almost like a discretionary fund that uh, that the engineering department would, you know, uh, uh, decide whether or not it should be done or whether it shouldn't be done. Because I, I recall a situation earlier this year where there was a development. I 
forget the name of the street. It was one, one of the dead end streets that ends on the water there and the guy was building on one side of the road or developing on one side of the road and a request came before council to, to do the other side of the road. And at that time, council decided that no, we weren't going to authorize the money to do that. So help me understand how that situation would be different than the situations you're describing. If I may, Your Worship, through to Councillor Oates, we, we have had situations uh, even in constructing capital works where um, to the best of our ability, we try to define everything beforehand. Uh, there are times though when we're under construction and we run into a situation where we have to deal with something. Um, we have used those funds in the past for that as well. Um, there isn't time, uh, we have the contractor with their equipment there and their personnel there and their resources trying to proceed down the street and, and they have to deal with a situation. Uh, and if we don't deal with it at that time, um, we would potentially have to come back and start ripping up some, some new infrastructure that we'd put down. They're just, at times there isn't, there isn't the, uh, the luxury of waiting. And uh, so uh, we have in the past, staff has made the decision to, to do some work um, to prevent us from coming back to rip up um, new infrastructure to deal with the situation that we discover. So just so I'm clear, the, the, uh, the barrier is, is that council can't consider it fast enough so you need to have it there all the time. This is Lovegrove. Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Salter. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So just on that note, I'm wondering why, if you're already um, giving us your estimates, which are already 20% over what you believe to be 20% over most likely, then would you not have that 20% left in your budget floating around there that you could use in an emergency without worrying about uh, getting council together fast enough to make that decision? Mr. Figueroa? If I may, Your Worship, uh, through Councillor Salter. Um, that is an option, but then that would potentially compromise our ability to finish the job that we have, not anticipating that uh, uh, the contingency is for, for the work that's been identified. If, if we run into a situation where we have to deal with, with even a, a, say, say a, drainage, a drainage course that's going across the, uh, the right of way, we have to deal with it before we can move on. Uh, yes, there's a contingency. Um, but sometimes we run into these things at the beginning of a project and, and we still have the rest of the project to do then with no contingency, potentially. Um, okay. Mrs. Combs? Um, Your Worship, I, with the greatest of respect to Council, when staff need to make a call on something like this, they need to make it right there and then on the spot. And in the long run, the, the cost of waiting is going to be greater than it is to have the contingency. Um, I believe that Council has the faith and trust in staff to understand that we don't use those funds unless it's necessary to use them. And with respect to the sidewalk, we were also dealing with a policy matter at that point in time with respect to what kind of roadworks we do. The kind of roadworks that we're doing with respect to this, um, this uh, work adjacent are things that come up in the process of doing a job um, in the sense that, I mean, we could be dealing with AC pipe that has to come out and be replaced. We could be dealing with all sorts of different issues that need to be dealt with there and then on the spot. And we have, uh, this allows us to work as effectively and efficiently as possible. Oh, it's like when you're trying to drain the swamp, you gotta deal with the alligators, pretty much? Okay. All right, yes, Councillor Oates. So, you know, I really didn't have a problem with this before we started the discussion, but the reason the money is being asked for now is because council's inability to act on it in a timely manner. Now, th if this is a problem, why am I becoming aware of this tonight? Why haven't we been told before we missed an opportunity? Why haven't, why haven't you softened us up for this? 
if that's if that's the big issue it comes and for me it seems it again it seems like a slush fund to be used at the discretion of a single department when I believe that 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 it could become before council it hasn't existed in our budget before I see no history of it being in there before now we're asked to put like a 1% close to a 1% tax increase aside for for if if the engineering department decides that it's appropriate to do something and I got I got great ton of respect for the engineering department or the operations department or whichever department we're talking about I got a lot of respect for all of them but to just say that you know you got a 20% contingency on the contract and then there's another 50 grand just in case we decide we're going to do something else I don't know I don't know how much faith we're supposed to have Mr. Butterworth. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just to give a little bit of history on this, um, works adjacent to development in the past uh, from 10 years ago has been in the budget almost every year. Most of the years it just gets uh, rolled into surplus because it doesn't get spent. It's very rarely that it'll get spent. So um, yeah, a few years ago it was taken out of the budget because it wasn't used very much and it was a way to try and reduce the budget costs because uh, it was in there every year. This year, because we had a situation or a couple situations where they couldn't actually do some work when the road was opened up um, because there was no budget monies and to come to council, it wouldn't have got done in time. So we thought we should put this back in and the way we've done it is we put it in for two years in a row and whatever doesn't get spent, we want to put in a reserve fund that will sit there and be, then it won't be every year it'll just be there for two years and as it gets whittled down we'll come back to council and say we want to top this up again it'll only get used in those situations where a developer is doing something they open up the road and there's some asbestos pipe or something we can replace it while the roads opened up while they're doing their works and that will then reduce costs in the long run and we won't be going back there in a few more years and tearing up that road again and then the other situation that happened this year, it doesn't happen, I don't think, very often. It was the first time I've seen it, where uh, on Temple Street, there was, a, I think it was a storm right away, or what right away was it? Storm. Where they identified some deficiencies, and we couldn't do the work to tie it in down to another street because there was no funding. And at the time when it was identified, um, the contractor was right there, and there was would be no time to do the full job without retendering it. And and coming back to council for monies first of all. So that's the situation that the intent of this is for and it will not be spent and it hasn't been spent in the past um, unless it's really needed where these situations where, you know, the de and a lot of times it's a development who opens up the road or has something and says, hey, look at this. And we say, yeah, we should replace that and we need some monies to do that right now. They're there with their contractor, it's not even our contractor and we need to get the work done. So. Sort of I, I guess to Mrs. Comas, uh, the the uh, the aspect that council is not in a position to respond quickly, we can't do that electronically the same day, can we? That's impossible. We have to have a, a duly a duly a called council meeting to do it in public. Okay, so Councillor Powell. Thank you, Worship. To you, to the Director of Engineering, and or maybe the Director of Finance. So what you're saying is that you want a hundred thousand dollars put aside this year only to be used throughout it'll stay in the surplus and you'll create a surplus but this is the only year you're going to ask for it and when that money's gone you'll come back and ask for more did i understand that right councillor our director years? of finance mr F mr butter thank you your worship through the councillor powell um it's in there for two years at this point in time um, and then what we're going to do in the first year, if we don't use it, it'll go into the reserve or say we use 10,000 of it or whatever we use, the rest will go into the reserve. And we just want to have a, enough in a reserve to cover us if the situation arises. Um, and then it'll, and then we won't, as long as we're not using it, that's all we'll have in there. We actually currently have it in the budget, I think two, 2017, 18, and then 2020, I believe, but we won't. We'll take it out of 2020 if we don't use 2017 and 18 and we're sitting with 200,000 in the reserve, we, we won't be using, we'll take it out of the budget after that until until we use it and then we'll ask for more money to bring the number back up. It'll, it'll be identified as, as, an, as a budget item in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the total reports that we get on, on all of these things. We'll, we'll, it'll be identified year after year as a budget item. 
Only so much as if we use it. So say we use 50,000 a year, then we would add 50,000 in to try and replenish the reserve. Okay. Who's next? I have a follow-up. You want to follow up? Yeah, I do. Follow up. And so then if we have two, say we save it for two years, 200,000, then you're going to show it in the surplus, right, in the next budget deliberations? So we will know that that money's there? Like, how are you going to account for that? Yes, we have something we call restricted surplus, so it would sit in a restricted surplus. So it's part of our surplus, but it's sort of, it's restricted for that purpose. Bottom line, it'll be identifiable. Yeah, okay. Who's next? Councillor Salter. So with regard to this fund, would, would this fund then be utilized if, for instance, there was an emergency situation and uh, we needed to access money to address an emergency situation? No. Mrs. Comas? It's only used for the fund for the purpose for which it's identified in the budget. Mr. Squire. Sorry, if I may, Your Worship, just to provide some clarification on this. When we did have this budget and when I was in a different position uh, in the engineering department, what we used this for was uh, or unanticipated works. Um, for development, we're only obligated or legally obligated to ask for the frontage directly in front of that development. So essentially property line to property line up to center line of the road. Where it made sense where that property line ended and potentially there would be some AC pipe from potentially from me to you, it made sense to actually get that designed and properly put in rather than ripping up the road five, ten years later when we had planned to do the capital works, we would bring that forward, incorporate that as part of the development, retain that engineer, also pay the engineering the additional cost to get it engineered and the installation of the pipe when we're doing that development, so ahead of the future planned capital. So that's where it really became beneficial, where we could have a, a fund to draw from it made sense rather than going back into the neighborhood five years to just to dig up that little 20 feet. Same would apply for a sidewalk or a ditch or anything that would, the unknowns that you do uncover when you uh, excavate underground works. Okay, Councillor Beal. Thank you, Worship. And um, this really seems like a very sensible thing to be considering and uh, would actually save money over time and also, uh, public uh, opinion when you go back and dig up a road that's just been repaired or just freshly put down and then go back in and dig it up. Because as I understand it, this is largely going to be things that are in the road, under the ground, et cetera. So thank you for all that clarification. Okay, Mrs. Uh, Lovegrove, we're moving on page 11, I guess. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, no. Not, that's not my page 11. There, that's it. No, that's not it. Page 11 is this. It's the uh, VIU MBA Society and the sliding doors at the PCTC of the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance. Oh, okay. It's right after, it should be right after that one in my package. I do apologize. That's it. That's it. it. Yes, it's hidden okay. for some reason. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> okay. Items that are not in the budget that are to be brought forward for budget deliberations, we have three of them. We have the VIU MBA Society that are looking for financial and in-kind assistance for $10,000. We have um, sliding doors replacement at PCTC, this building, um, for $58,000. And we also have the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance. Um, I believe they're dues for that society for $1,000. So the first item, uh, we have the MBA Society in the audience. They came to us earlier, well, a number of months ago, to talk about this, and that, I believe that was their request. So members of council? What's your, what's your thought? These are students that are coming from all over Canada to, uh, to Parksville, and they're here for two or three days, and the objective is to, to provide uh, the visiting students with a, a good appreciation of what we do and where we are and how 
just nature and everything else. So, Councillor Powell. Are you looking for a motion, Your Worship? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that this be included in the 2017 budget. Do I have a second or seconded by Councillor Oates? Discussion on the motion. Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Worship. Um, This was the full amount that um, the VIE, VIU MBA Society was asking for. Um, since they met with us, have they dis I guess uh, I want to know if they've d looked at any well, other. Well, they're, they're here. I think they, that's the if amount they that they asked for. If they have any other financial um, information since they've met with us that they could uh, discuss appropriate that when well, they're going to speak they can talk anyway so you go ahead you, you want to make any comments uh, about uh, about the amount is it negotiable <laughs> to increase Uh, well, first, I just want to thank you all for having us here, and um, we're just really honored to be here to ha have this discussion with you all today. Um, with the NBA games, we're very excited. Uh, we also wanted to provide a quick update um, on that. Uh, we actually were invited to go to Ottawa. And just for those council members who weren't here at that meeting that we had, uh, the national NBA games, we won the bid uh, to host the national NBA games, and will be actually host at the Tanamar Resort. And so essentially you have 600 to 800 NBA leaders across Canada uh, coming to uh, British Columbia for the first time in 30 years of this competition. And so these are people in a variety of industries who may be looking to start their own business. And so what we wanted to do is when we came here to council, uh, we were requesting $10,000. The actual event budget of what we need to raise, our uh, operating costs, our goal, we need to raise about close to $150,000 to reduce costs. And we were coming to Parksville City Council for the 10000 to help us get there. Um, the cost and how that would be allocated would be to helping reduce um, costs associated to the stay at the Tynamara Resort and the transportation costs associated uh, for taking people through Parksville and to the venues that are actually taking place for the case competitions, the sport events, uh, and the spirit competition events. Thanks, Councillor Oates. Just, I, I missed, how many how many participants did you say were coming? 600 to 800 MBA leaders across Canada from over 20 universities. For how long? They're going to be here from January 2nd to 4th. Some members are coming earlier um, as well as staying later. So what we actually wanted to do is promote the city of Parksville and have pre and post packages. So, you know, if uh, students want to come to the Tanamara to stay a bit earlier, uh, they can be able to maybe experience different areas such as Coombs or Cathedral Grove um, and kind of really promote the beauty of the city. Councillor, I'm going to go to Councillor uh, Councillor Salter and then Councillor Patterson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you. Um, just wondering, well, thank you for explaining that. And how much have you guys um, managed to put together so far then? So w with, you know, what we just actually hosted the BC NBA Games, that, that event's just completed. And moving forward to the National NBA Games, we're still about $50,000 to go um, for what we need to achieve. And so this will definitely help us in our efforts um, to get there, especially now the games events are on their way, but we've done very, very well. And um, we are in works with the other city councils as well to support. Uh, Nanaimo has committed to our team as well as the city council of, or the town of Qualcomm Beach. So we thought, you know, the events in Parksville would be nice to have the support of the city here. And um, yeah, it'd be great. Councillor Patterson. Thank you, and absolutely, I, I understand that. Um, will any of your uh, games and things be done outside of Tynamara, like at our community and conference center, that we can do an in kind in conjunction with the 10,000 that you're asking for, or? So, majority, uh, just due to venue restrictions, um, so we have 600, 800 MBA students, um, and a lot of that, um, a lot of the bigger events, we'd say, uh, would be at the conference center in Nanaimo because it can house that many people. Um, but um, we are going to be doing events at the Tanamara Resort um, with regards to, you know, the evening socials um, and 
areas that can potentially be reduced. And we thought that this would be a great opportunity for the in-kind assistance could also be contributed to how we kind of frame that at the Tynemar Resort. Um, as that's, I think, the best avenue for us to capture with regards to the overall experience in reducing costs that's in Parksville. Uh, one thing to add, though, we want to, and we're going to be meeting uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, to, we actually had, we had wristbands, actually, for the BCNBA games, where students would actually have the opportunity to go down downtown Nanaimo and interact with local businesses, and they get discounts, you know, on, um, from local businesses to interact with the business community. And so that's something that we want to bring to Parksville, as the event now will be housed in Parksville. So these are types of, you know, additions and that extra effort that we will be taking uh, to make sure we promote the local businesses here. But with regards to your question, it would be more focused on Tanamara, the Tanamara Resort. Uh, have, have you gotten any money or uh, promise of money from Coalicum Beach? Uh, we are in the Very indiscreet question. So uh, I can tell you that um, the Coalicum Beach has, is committing funds. Okay. Um, the pro and uh, the amount is, um, will be a bit above, let's say $10,000, but um, that, that's what I can say because it hasn't been confirmed yet. But um, we're hoping we're hoping to confirm that uh, Nanaimo has confirmed um, their contribution. And I can tell you that of fifteen thousand dollars, and okay. that's been um, approved, and the motion's been carried, and um, we're just in the process of receiving the check. So, yeah. Great. Councilor Rhodes, was that fifteen or fifty? From Nanaimo? I would love fifty, but it's fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen thousand. Okay. Yeah. Fifteen thousand. That's that's what okay. we requested from just, them. And, yeah. Just I, I wish you much much success uh, uh, with your event, but I have to ask, if the event, if the major uh, functions, the bigger functions are going to be held in Nanaimo, why did you choose to house them all here in Parksville? That's actually a great question, so thank you so much for your question. Actually, the case competitions are actually held in Parksville and Qualcomm. Deep Bay Marine Station uh, is one of our case competitions. We're using the Arbutus Meadows uh, facility for the indoor soccer, um, as well as Milner Gardens is another area that we're using for the case competitions. So actually, it's funny because we went to see the Nile, they're saying, why are you guys in Parksville? But uh, what we wanted to do is go overall balance uh, to showcase the, the North Island experience. And so we house people in Parksville. Um, and they'll be able to have uh, transportation to visit local downtown Parksville to showcase that as well. But a lot of our case competitions are on this side of the town and not in Nanaimo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a comment about if somebody near to us gives less money, we get a bigger, we get a bigger promotional uh, push. Anyway, I won't go there. <laughs> too, too, too competitive. Would you would you come to my egg dev meeting on the 24th again with the with the bracelet idea? Because I didn't we didn't know about that at the time. So can you come back on the 24th, 24th at 10 o'clock? Okay. 100%. Thank you. Yeah. Any more any more questions for the for the for the group? Okay. I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. And take that away that it's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item is sliding doors. These are the sliding doors in the front here. Uh, I get, I, I brought that up, I think, but I get a lot of, a lot of complaints, starting off with the security guards and the cops, watching people, elderly people, people with walkers, people with wheelchairs, and it's, it's a real arduous task to get into this building. And I think it's time in this day and age, and I, I don't know, I'll hear some comments from, from Councillor Patterson, who's been our uh, council representative to the Access, Access Oceanside Association. But I, I think it's time, and I, I just noticed for those of you who have been to Nanaimo lately, if you go to the, um, uh, what's the name of the mall, the South, uh, the Woodgrove, Woodgrove Mall, they've got those doors now, and they're wonderful. You walk in, the doors open. It's like you're walking into the Academy Awards. So 
I guess that's the price. I was told it would be fairly expensive, so I'll leave that to members of council to discuss right now. Anybody got any comments to make? Councillor Patterson, with your association? You want to make a motion? I'd like Councillor Patterson, you want to make a motion? I do, but I'd like to speak to it for a moment. Well, let me get a seconder and then okay. you can speak to it. Do I have a seconder? The, the motion, motion is, is that we install sliding doors at the PCTC entrance here for the cost of $58,000. Do you second it? I have a seconder. Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, although I'm not happy about the expense of, uh, of the doorways and that, this is only a first step. And that because it only allows us into the building. Uh, someone that has an accessibility challenge um, couldn't make it into your office per se. Um, it only allows one door um, that's accessible to someone that has a, a large um, wheelchair type device. Um, it doesn't uh, acknowledge some of our other properties in in the city of Parksville. This only shows one. So what I'm wondering is when this goes out to tender or goes out to getting more information, if it's so passed, and that if we can look at um, slowly thinking about some of our other doors and if there's any cost um, um, decrease by having more than one. Any other comments on this on this item, uh, Mr. Butterworth? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just a clarification, and perhaps the motion may have to change the way it was worded. Um, the fifty-eight thousand is an increase to the existing budget for replacing the doors. It's not the cost of the doors, so it's actually more than that. I can't remember what the uh, was it fifteen thousand that was in the budget or more. It's just in addition to. Yeah, it's it, so the motion could perhaps be changed to increase the replaced doors by 58,000 or replace the... Uh, by PCTC. 15 or 50? No, in, increase the budget by 58,000. Because oh, there's okay. already an existing budget in there of, I think it's 15,000, but I could be we wrong We might need that. more money. So okay. it's 58 more, it's not okay. the total cost. And the other thing uh, to consider that, um, and this was a point made earlier by council, is that uh, for one of the other items. We have partners in this building and we should either, we're gonna bite the bullet and do the whole thing ourselves or we should consult our partners as well to see um, if they have any problems with installing sliding doors and sharing the cost in it. Because the- they Very, approved, very good point. Yeah. They've approved the replacement of the doors as, as they are now and their share of it, but they haven't seen an increased cost of 58,000. So. So, so the motion would read something to the effect of increase the budget by 58,000 and prior to awarding any contracts, attempt to get a contribution from other, other, um, other participants, other, other lessees or other people in the building, like the school board and like the library and like the VIU. Pardon me? Okay. All right. So our building partner. Okay. Uh, Councillor Salter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I'm just wondering, maybe we're putting the cart before the horse, so shouldn't we approach um, our, you know, VIU and so on first, uh, see if they're interested in, a, in um, uh, paying part of the costs uh, prior to us putting this amount down as per, as per the budget? If, if we did that, Can I have a we need to have an answer fairly quickly because, we, you know, we're, we're putting the budget together, so we need to know fairly quickly. Can, okay. Could that be done, Mrs. Gomez? This is budget time for everybody, Your Worship, so it would be a, um, a good time to approach them. But I guess the question is, is that if, if our partners are not willing to participate, does the city still want to go ahead? And if yeah. we still want to go ahead, then we should provide for the $58,000, and then any any contributions from our partners would be a bonus. Okay. So, I, and we, we would have, definitely do that. So, Councillor Salter. I did have one on. other thing that I wanted to mention, which was, um, I think it is a good idea because I think it's, it speaks to um, hiring people who may have a disability and need to get in and out of the building and need to get in and out to go to work and so on. Mm -hmm. But if they can't get in and out of the building or even in and out of the office, um, how to, then it kind of seems discriminatory because there's no access for them. Thank you. Anybody else? Councillor, Councillor B. 
Thank you, Your Worship. And um, I do appreciate the comments that uh, Councillor Patterson has, has brought brought forward with the idea that we need to think uh, longer range uh, about this topic. But just a point of clarification from conversations that I've had with people who do need to use the um, automatic doors is that I'm not hearing about difficulties with our side door. So it's, it's, it's not that all of the doors are causing issues, but the, where we have the single door, there does not seem to be a difficulty, but I certainly hear time and time again about the problems with the front door because of the nature of how, how it's, it's set up. So. Councillor Oates, is the intent to have a set of two doors is there, is there intent to have two double doors or one set of double doors? I'm concerned about the heat loss. You can always get air curtains. Uh, okay, anybody answer that? I'm two sets, one Yeah, the price reflects all the outside doors, which includes the double doors. So we have the two front double doors and then the ones over here on the south entrance as well. They're double doors. It doesn't, it only a single door on the east entrance. I'm surprised you'd ask that question about the loss of hot air in a, in a building like this with the council mem chambers and all that stuff going on. I'm, <laughs> Councillor Oates. I'm more concerned with the wood smoke coming in actually. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, so just for clarity. Just for clarity, there's only going to be a single set of doors that go like this. Or is there going to be one set like this, I come in and then another set opens and, and I go in? Right now, I we went out to a vendor who's kind of uh, just received this for in the last week. But the type of doors that we did price, it would be as you come in from the outside, there'd be sliding, you enter into the, the neutral zone, call it, and there would be a second set that would open. I don't know about the timing of each. If you come in from the outside, they both open, or one opens and then it triggers a second one at a delayed offset. The details would have to be worked out once we retain the vendor. Mr. Butterworth. Uh, there was one other option that was pointed out to me as well that uh, might be a consideration is that we don't have to have each door open individually in the existing the way they're set up right now the button could open both doors so that would I think maybe alleviate some of the issues people are having because they don't have to go in one door and then push another button they just push one button and both doors open they go right through so. yeah I, I I didn't get any I didn't get very many very much support for that I the, what was proposed to me was the sliding doors it's simple There is a good reason for that, which is um, people who have mobility issues are now having to find their way to the button, get to the button, then get back in and get into the, and then go to another button, open that door. So it, it, it's true. Uh, just get in the building right, and then get out in an emergency as well. Okay. I'm going to call the vote unless anybody's got any other concerns. All those in favor? Thank you. Opposed? Nobody is opposed. The Vancouver Island Economic Alliance, uh, I, I'll take the this issue again. I attended the Vancouver Economic Island Economic Alliance last week. I sent everybody a copy of what the agenda was about. We got a copy of the annual report, which I thought was excellent. A lot of good information. We used to belong to the uh, VAIA, but we, we, a few years ago, we decided not not to uh, not to join. And I'm I'm just recommending it's a membership, an annual membership of a thousand dollars. And uh, frankly, uh, we'll have to watch out. I don't think that everybody could go, but we could certainly set, a, set out a format later if, if people decide to join where we could send at least a few counselors that are available to go. It's a two-day two -day affair, and it's uh, from morning till night. And this year, we had the Premier coming, uh, coming to talk to us and some very good speakers from, from the business community. So I have a motion for that. Move that the uh, 2017 budget include $1,000 for the Get Vancouver Island Economic Alliance. I have a seconder with Councillor Beal. Any discussion on that motion? Uh, Councillor Salter. 
Thank you, Ms. Mayor. My question is just that, so with this $1,000, that then provides the ability for counselors to attend the forum once a year? Is that what it is? It wouldn't be free, but there's also other information that comes during the year. We would get emails on what they're doing, what's going on, reports of different kinds. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That is carried. Mrs. Lovegrove, carry on. Thank you, Your Worship. The next slide is a summary of the 20-year capital plan. This is a summary of all the minor and major capital expenditures. Bring some bracelets. Bring a box of bracelets, okay? Carry on. This is a summary of departmental capital, major and minor capital expenditures over the next 20-year period. That's in our financial plan. The top part is the departmental expenditures, and the bottom part is the funding sources. It's just an information slide for counsel. The next one is with all the items in the provisional plan is tonight without the three items that have just been approved. This is how our financial plan would look. Basically, the top part is all our funding sources. The second part of that page is the expenditures, and then it shows the total net income from operations for the five years of the plan. Then the second part of the document is the non-operating budget items, which also require transfers from our reserves to come down to a balanced budget. So you'll see the transfer to the reserves just there at the bottom, so that we don't have a deficit or a surplus, but that transfer from the unrestricted reserves does pull from it and does alter our reserves. So that is what the financial plan looks like for the next five years, and that's what our budget bylaw is based on. Just another information slide. The operating expenditures is just a little breakout based on the object codes. You will see that just for operating items alone, the labor and related costs are the highest portion of those costs at 49%, then followed by contract services, which takes up 38%, and the other items just kind of fall in when really low percentages. The next slide is both the budgeting, operating, and capital expenditures by type. So as we saw the salaries in the first one at 49%, when we add the capital in there, the salary and related costs basically drop down to 35%, but the contract services increase to 49%. And again, the other areas of the expenditures basically remain pretty low. Excuse me. Leave that slide there, please, for a moment. Mr. Butterworth, when we had the audit, the debt expenditure is 1%. To me, that seems to be if my debt load was 1%, I'd be pretty happy. My personal debt load was 1%. Is that a good batting average? Yeah, I would say our debt levels are pretty good. We haven't done a comparison against all the other municipalities, but I think we're doing pretty well. I'm glad you said yes to that. Okay. Carry on. Thank you, Your Worship. So at the end of it all, without taking into consideration the three items that have just been approved, our surplus started out in 2017 at the end of the year at $2.7 million. They gradually decrease over the years, and in the year 2021, we actually right now are showing a negative surplus. We do have a plan for this, and I will turn it over to Mr. Butterworth to explain that. Okay. Any questions for Mrs. Lovegrove? Mr. Butterworth, do you want to make a comment? I was just going to make a comment on the 2021 deficit, which we cannot take a plan forward with that deficit in there. One thing we thought about is the new public works shop 
is actually a uh, shared services building between um, the water fund, the sewer fund, and parks and operations. So what we're proposing to deal with that deficit would be to, uh, subject to council's approval, would be to do a transfer from the water fund surplus and the, uh, or our contribution to come from the water fund and the sewer fund towards that building because their equipment um, and their staff do, will be using that shop building. Um, so that was one way that we have where we can deal with that deficit if council so desires. Um, this is, uh, since I've been here, one of the, we already share operating costs that way where we allocate a portion of the public works shop uh, operating costs and some of these staff, including admin staff and finance staff, we, we do allocate a portion of our operating costs to the water and sewer fund. But in the capital, this is the first time we've had a sort of a shared building that uh, all the funds would be using. And so right now it's all budgeted in the operating, or in the general fund and that may not be uh, fair to the taxpayers and perhaps the ratepayers should be paying a portion of that as well. So. I agree. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out, and you and I had this discussion earlier this week, uh, you know, things look, things get kind of rough and tough when we get down to beyond 2018, but when you look at what's being, and we can't do this now because it's not a fait accompli, but when you look at what's being constructed in Parksville, you, you, have, to, you have to make a, a fairly educated uh, guess that you know, re uh, revenue is going to increase. I mean, we've got we've got Cedar uh, Cedar Renz Road project, which is 150 homes. We've got a, a lot of other things that are going on now that aren't completed yet, but they will be. So, I guess we can we can we can't cross that bridge until we get there. But I would imagine we're going to get there at some point in time. You want to comment on that, Mr. Butterworth? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Our, our financial plan right now um, carries with it, I think it's 25 million. It's between 20 and 25 million in new developments every year in our financial plan. So we're already counting for a lot of new development in there. If, uh, for instance, Despard was done next year, it would probably be a lot more than 25 million. So um, that may change, you know, how much our tax revenues are. But at this point in time, um, we're just going based on our history of what uh, our average is, and I think it's it's between 20 and 25 million that we have in our plan right now, part part for commercial and part for residential, um, in new development happening every year. So that's already built into these numbers, uh, increased assessments, plus the 4% tax increase as well. You're telling me the Renz Road project is included in here, 155 homes? The yes, I, oh, I can't say specifically Rens Road is, but new development for residential I think is 18 million every year in our plan. So okay. 18 million of new construction is in the plan. Okay, thank you, Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Worship. Um, so my question is towards uh, the Director of uh, Finance, and that by sharing or transferring from the Water and Sewer Fund, uh, what does that I'm, I'm assuming it's not just a, a paper transfer or something. It would have to require um, a certain amount of, uh, I won't say bylaw, but a difference of uh, recommendation from council. Is that all that will be required at this point? And should we not be looking at that prior to like 2020? And is that what we're looking at right now? So that's the basically is the question. Is, are you looking for a motion to to move forward on this recommendation from yourself? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, what we would be, uh, we wouldn't need a motion, but what we would do is when we bring back the plan next week, if council uh, was approving us to do that, is we would put it in the financial plan so it would show up, be reflected in the general plan as a transfer from the water and sewer funds and also in the water and sewer funds as a transfer to the general fund uh, or contribution towards the public works building. So that's how it would show up uh, when we brought this back next week. Follow up. Are you looking for a set amount or a percentage or what will that look like? Um, what we want to do, and we've actually already done it, but uh, or already been working on it, is it would be, we think the best way to do it would be proportionate between the public works and parks operating costs versus the sewer fund operating costs versus the water fund operating costs. So proportionately amongst those uh, users of the building, and then we would 
uh, come up with a number and then transfer that amount. Okay, Councilor Oates. So the, the water fund and the sewer utility fund are both projected to be in surplus situations until for the foreseeable future. And the general fund is expected to be in a deficit situation in 2021. In that same year, both the sewer fund and the water funds uh, are going to be in the surplus, and it's that surplus, along with the public works portion, is the part that you're, that's where the transfer and the budget would happen, from the surplus from the water and the sewer funds. Those, those are, show, one is showing at, uh, the water is showing at uh, 738,000 and change, and the uh, sewer is showing at 1.5 million. So, uh, and, and the general fund is showing a quarter of a million or whatever it is in deficit. So the proposal is to take a little bit from each of those in addition to what comes the, the part that public works would have to pay, and that's how you're going to balance the deficit in the general fund? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, what we would do is, uh, when, we, when we got that operating number, we can bring it back next week, um, just because I'm not exactly sure what the numbers are right now. Um, so we'll do that calculation. It would actually, the transfer would actually happen when, uh, as the public works building expenditures are happening. So it would happen in that year. So it would happen in 2017 and 18. I think it's a two-year project. And it would reduce the deficit all the way uh, in 2021. And this one, it would also reduce the surpluses of the other funds uh, all the way along. When would we see when would we see that on paper next year? This year? You're going to wrap it up. We're going to do okay. 2017. Okay, um, Mrs. Lovegrove, let's go on. We're at the uh, we're at the water fund. Just checking. Is there any more questions prior to moving on? Just I want to go to questions from the audience at this point in time? Yeah. Okay. Uh, ooh, f just, ab just about a brand new councillor. Go ahead, Mr. Burden. Just a quick one. treatment plant and. At this point in time, um, the French Tree Creek, uh, they're collecting DCCs for it, and they requisition us for um, the contribution towards the French Creek, um, and it comes out of the general fund right now. It does not come out of the sewer fund. Um, so, and it gets taxed directly to the taxpayers as part of the RDN requisition. So if they increase that, uh, just to use an example, if they increased it 10%, then there's going to be a 10% increase in the taxes because we have to pay for that to the RDN. So um, it's not directly factored into any of our funds because it's basically the RDN invoices us and we, ta we uh, send the tax bill out and pay them back. Thank you. Okay, Charlie Stone. Excuse me. Um, so the part-time accountant is probably needed, but at the same time, a few years ago, we bought some pretty expensive accounting software. At that point, it seemed like there might be an opportunity to have less people in the accounting department. and. You know, I've worked at private companies where the accounting department seems to do an amazing amount with a very small number of people, and I challenge Parksville to consider trying to do the same. Mr. Butterworth, what do you have to say to that? Well, I think the uh, we have an awful lot of demands from other levels of government. Uh, we have numerous different reporting we have to do. We have to go through a budget process like this that takes a lot of time. Um, I think a lot of organizations don't go through quite as in-depth of processes as the finance department or and other departments of the municipality go through. There's a lot of 
um, I guess, red tape from other levels of government that we have to follow, and uh, and that certainly adds to the amount of time it takes for us to do our jobs. So. And, I, and I remember being at university and being sort of surprised that we weren't allowed to pay at the university, we had to pay somewhere else. And that was a way of saving costs of accounting by having you pay, you know, at, at a, you could go to a bank and pay your bill. So I, I can't rattle on forever, but I just want to encourage, you know, some attempts at, at trying to manage things well. And um, while I'm up here, um, the similar to that in the community and conference center next door, if if you could try to find a contractor who would use their employees during dead times to do other things, then they could, you know, do whatever they have to do in a more efficient way, and that should be better for us. Does that make any sense? In order to do that, the way that we have a contract now, in order to do that, uh, the, the uh, conference and community center would have to come under the jurisdiction of the city because we have an arm's length relationship now with the board and the executive director and we, there's no... Uh, right. We no, but I'm suggesting that right now we have the contract with them. I'm saying let's work towards being able to entertain other contractors because this contractor, they started out really well. You know, they, they started this center, they did a great service for us, but now it would be worthwhile to try to get other contractors to compete against them. Thank you. Any further questions from members of the audience before we move on? Okay, let's go to let's go to the uh, the water fund. Thank you, your worship. The building blocks for the financial plan for the water fund still assumes plan B of the ERWS treatment and intake project. Grants included in this financial plan are 3,200,000 in 2017 and 1,000,000 in 2018. Long-term borrowing in this financial plan is 2.7 million in 2017. The budget adjustments, um, the revised rates, 2.5% uh, in 2017 and 2% 2 from 2018 to 2021. The spending packages that have been provided, um, they're actually 2017 spending packages, I do apologize for that. Um, meter reading software upgrade for $35,000 and Surfside RV meter chamber bypass for $35,000 as well. We have a 2017 capital budget adjustment um, the ERWS River Intake and Water Treatment Plant has come in with costs uh, that are, have increased the total overall uh, cost by 13%. It's approximately $3.7 million. This year in this financial plan, we have rebudgeted the costs of the ERWS, and they are not, basically the plan now goes from 2017 to about 2018 and we're not, we will not be carrying forward any funds left over from this year. We have rebudgeted, so we'll go starting in 2017, this is what we need till, till when it's done. And then talking to Mr. Squire and Mrs. Comis, I gather we're gonna go after some government grants. Big time for this, and uh, okay, good. Okay. Thank you, more money. Information slide of the minor and major capital expenditures for the water fund. Again, just the total expenditures on the top and the funding sources where the funds are coming from along the bottom. The financial plan or equivalent to the budget bylaw that will be brought forward for the water fund, showing a balanced budget for all of the five years. And the projected surpluses for each of the years for the financial plan and then going on into 2026 and you will see that um, we are positive all the way through we do dip a little bit um, in 2021 2022 but we gradually work our way back up into 2026 to the over the million dollars where we recommend that the level be at that's it for the water fund question from councillor beal Thank you, Worship, and um, through, um, 
I'm just uh, curious with the water utility fund, the unrestricted surplus, will this then be uh, amount be affected by that transfer of some funds? So will this also be updated then for next week? Thank you. Councillor Oates. Well, it's the biggest number that's been in front of us tonight is a change. So why the 13% increase to the river intake in the water treatment plant? Mr. Squire. Through your worship, last year's budget was based on what we knew then, what was presented to us by our, our consulting firm, and it was based on a preliminary design. Um, what we have in front of us is a budget that I prepared based on the last detailed design estimate. So you're going to something that um, certainly has a lot more in depth um, as far as uh, cost estimate. We won't know the initial, the actual costs until that tender closes and those envelopes are opened. Um, this is a best guess with our, with our budget. There are contingencies still in this. There's also on top of this a 4% escalation um, that's over and above, which includes that year that essentially last year's budget was an estimate prepared, I believe, on December 10th, 2015. That was the cost to date. So on top of that, we got 4% escalation costs because costs, as we know, with construction are always going up. Um, so that 4% is on top of that. What wasn't accounted for in that cost estimate last year was fire suppression. Um, this is our own City of Parksville bylaw, so there are additional costs for fire suppression. Even though this building is not habitable, we felt that um, we shouldn't be treated differently than any other developers. So we included fire suppression as part of the um, as part of this uh, development. Also wasn't included were DCC costs for both the city and the RDN for sewer charges for DCCs. Um, there's also costs in there for uh, waste discharge permit from the RDN um, because we will be, um, we're over and above a certain limit with the RDN so we're subject to additional costs to pay on an annual basis and that will be from 2018 on when the water plant is live. Um, in order to reduce those costs, we also looked at uh, treating the backwash from the membranes. So they would actually go into a secondary membrane treatment. Those costs weren't incorporated. So um, we felt the initial capital cost investment of a secondary um, membranes to treat that waste discharge would take it from 95% efficient, so that 5% would go to waste, and that waste would go into the sanitary system, which would get pumped uh, several times, and then into the and into the French Creek Water Pollution Control Center, which would require further treatment. So we just, we looked at that, and the capital costs offset the actual long-term operating costs for that. Um, we also seriously looked at, we did some additional um, membrane piloting, proof piloting. We've selected the membrane vendor and um, we looked at looking at real extensive um, piloting during the winter months and the sand separation during high turbidity events. If there's an emergency, we need to draw more water and, and um, it's a sand that causes a lot of problem. So in order to, to um, extend the life of the membranes. There's additional sand separation equipment ahead of the membrane train. Um, we looked at uh, one of the costs was bringing it down instead of up at the water treatment plant. Uh, when you add chemicals into it, you actually would have to expel whatever's coming out of the sand separators into the sanitary sewer. If we moved it down to the river station, we don't have to do that. We're simply just treating raw water. What that did was essentially expand the building. When you do that, you expand the cost. So those are additional capital costs, but they would, um, the long-term operating costs would be offset. So we felt it's, it's um, a cost advantage to do that. Um, there was some further consultation with DFO that resulted in additional costs, the expansion, uh, um, 
intake was essentially we had to build it bigger. And um, one unknown thing too is our current island health permit uh, we submitted back in August. There potentially may be some additional requirements from island health for us which are factored in here um, for additional UV treatment. We have to, we do have UV treatment, but because of the secondary membranes, they potentially may want some additional treatment. So it's unknown, they haven't got back to us yet. We'd hope they did, but um, we should know by the, prior to the tender closing. Just for Council's information before I, I uh, move over to Councillor Salter, uh, we discussed this at the ER ERWS meeting on Monday morning of this week. Uh, at length with our colleagues from the RDN and uh, as you know the message that came through loud and clear to members of the RWS board was the fact that this is a um, this is a moving target there will be there will be occasions where there will be some unknowns that come to the fore and uh, we'll have to deal with it at that time we've never built anything like this I think everybody's trying to staff are trying to include as much as possible so that we don't have any any uh, anomalies popping up, but uh, when you see the report that uh, Mr. Squire sent to Fisheries and Oceans, it's a fairly lengthy, it's a fairly thick document, and I, it's, it's not surprising that they haven't gotten back to us yet because there's a lot of stuff to consider, and I'm sure that they're going over with a fine-tooth comb. And there may be, there may be some things. I think unforeseen is probably going to be the buzzword until we get, until we get to tender and and, and get the. Uh, Get the get the uh, prices in. You agree with that, Mr. F Mr. Squire? I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The other unknowns. I just there's just two more items, and there are the bigger ones. Is there's on the island there's a that wasn't factored in on the original preliminary cost estimate budget. Was the additional costs on the island as a local factor here? It's 30, 30 to 40 percent more on the island yeah. versus somewhere where it's more competitive on the mainland or back in Ontario where we have more suppliers. Uh, more industry to drive that. So there is a cost factor in inflation, cost factor here, a localized one for, for concrete works. Certainly a lot more expensive. And then the big one is the building in itself where we had an architect involved because uh, we have to go through our own development process. Originally, we um, the preliminary design cost estimate was based on just a pre-engineered, prefabricated building that we would just buy. It's, it's, it would be a dressed up box. Um, the architect suggested, you know, we could go and dress up the facade with um, conventionally. Um, that is certainly far more expensive, but we do have the option to explore both options when those prices come in. So the um, pre-engineered building would be a provisional price, which is in the tender and we're currently tendering the project right now. That, that specific pro, uh, project and will be brought back to Council when you come for the uh, budget uh, budget adjustment. Okay, Councillor Salter. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a few questions um, as a result of this. Um, one, you mentioned that um, you needed to add costs because there'd be chemicals being put into the water. Um, but then you said, well, no, because then uh, the water would be coming down to the, the plant, and at that point you don't need to put chemicals in because now you're at the plant. So, um, so I'm wondering which, wh wh why am I confused about that? It's one or the other. Okay. Um, with membrane uh, treatment technology, what you need is coagulants. Coagulants actually take small particles and make them into bigger particles. When you do that, they're easier to treat. Um, they actually um, become b bigger particles and they're actually shed off the membranes a lot easier. Um, it's very, Nanaimo uses these same chemicals. When these, the, that chemical actually has to get injected um, just before the plant and able to mix with the raw water and react with it, um, if you bring the sand separators to the water treatment plant, they're essentially just behind the chemical injection. So as soon as you add the chemicals to it, um, it would be in the sand separator and all that, that 5% would have to be treated to a different, go to sewage disposal. Where if it's down at the river, where it's raw water and the sand separation occurs there ahead of the chemical injection, 
then you don't have to do any further treatment. It's just raw water and sand is your end product. Oh, and my follow-up, so is that the waste discharge that you're talking about then, is the sand? Yes, at that point, yes. So you need a permit for sand? Because I've got waste discharge permits. The waste discharge permit, there's always going to be waste byproduct out of the membranes. They're, with the secondary treatment, they're 99% efficient. There's that 1% waste. So there's 100% coming in, that 1% goes to sewer, which is all the, the product that sheds off. That would be all your turbidity and all the dissolved minerals within that raw water. It has to go to waste because there's nowhere else to treat it. So that speaks to why there's a waste discharge permit then, because yeah. there is waste. All right, and then, and then I had another question about the building, which I thought we had discussed, I thought it was our last meeting, might it, yeah, um, where you had mentioned, um, that we had the option of just going with, you know, just the not beautiful box, um, and, and that was it, which we, uh, as I recall, agreed to just going with a box. And so now I'm, now I'm not sure what's happening because you're seeing now you've added a cost in here, um, you know, because you used an art architect and he thought you could make it a little more beautiful and so on. So you're saying that's included in this increased cost. Uh, through your worship, we will be pricing both options, and when those prices come in, we'll come back to council for that recommendation to explore e either option. Right, so, yeah, so you're asking for 13%. You're saying that's part of it, but maybe that's not part of it. So are you asking for us to, uh, uh, to approve this, and then you're going to get the numbers, or...? Currently, right just now, this clarify. is just, just a budget that we have, to, that the best known monies that we are in front of us right now. Um, as mentioned previously, we went through a fairly extensive value engineering exercise to look at uh, weights and measures to actually reduce some of those costs. One of those big costs was the Building. option of going to a prefabricated engineering building. Um, we are still proceeding with the design of, of the full, full building, but we're also giving in the contractor to say, give us a price, and it would be a, less, a lesser price for just a pre-eng building. Now, we don't know that until the tender gets opened. Once that gets open, we can determine if both prices are under budget, we would come back to council and make a recommendation and then council could decide which way to go. So one more question, when would you know, when would you have this? Our numbers? anticipated, uh, we are currently under tender and it closes on January 12th, providing there are no extensions. Typically a contract this size, contractors like a little bit more, so I would say a couple more weeks. Um, so you're looking at February we'd come back to council with a uh, recommendation for the lowest bid contractor. Just for council's information too, I forgot to mention that uh, there's eight, eight contractors that have been pre-qualified for, for, for the both phases, and uh, they're fairly well known throughout North America. And so that's, uh, that's encouraging and that's been, that work has been done. So it's just a case of getting them out the packages with the plans and specs and letting them come back with our prices. Thank okay. You. Thank you for that. Councillor Oates. So, so if this were approved, the additional 3.7 million, what's the estimate, uh, what, what's the current number we're at now for the project? If this were included? The current total cost for the whole project is 32.5 million. So I'm 100% clear that includes the additional 3.7 that's uh, proposed here tonight? That's correct.
Of the 3.7, parcel share is 2.59. Twenty five point five million. This is twenty seventeen to twenty twenty one, through your worship. According to the ministry, the island health folk, we have to have the project up and running by. September, October 2018. September 2018. Correct, Mr. Squire? Yeah, okay. Any further questions on the water fund? We're going to move to the sewer. Yes, Mr. Stone. Mr. Squire? Through your worship, we advertise for uh, pre qualification through BC bid. So it's an open tender. And then from there, we selected the four for contract one, contract two is the transmission main, and there's four contractors selected as that as well. Thank you, Your Worship. The building blocks for the sewer utility fund basically are a rate increase of 5% in the full five years of the financial plan. We had no spending packages come forward for any changes in the sewer fund this year. The major and minor capital expenditures and information sheet showing a total of 7.3, sorry, 7 million, yeah, 7.3 million dollars uh, over the 20 years. The Financial plan for the sewer fund itself, again, shows funding sources, the expenditures, and then the non-operating budget items, which make up the full budget, and once again, showing a fully balanced budget for the five years of the provincial plan. And the surpluses for the sewer fund start out at $2.3 million and end up at $1.7 million. And yes, again, once the allocations are done, for to the general fund these will be these will be reduced but they will still be in a positive position and that's it for the sewer fund Council, Councilor. Uh, probably to the director of finance if the uh, if the money is moved from the surplus uh, from the water fund and then from the sewer fund to uh, make up for the deficit in 2021 that will not change the presumed increases for the water and sewer fund, the percentage increases. It'll just change what the uh, what their surpluses will be. We'll still we're still assuming the same percentage increases. Uh, uh, yes, Your Worship, uh, through the councillor, uh, we would at this point be assuming the same increases. I'm actually even looking at the sewer fund, and um, depending on what this transfer is. Uh, starting next year that five percent increase maybe can go down a little bit because our reserves are looking a little healthier um, uh, now than what they were a few years ago so sir powell thank you worship and so just correct me if i'm wrong wouldn't it be appropriate if we're going to if the guesstimate for the sewer the new treatment plant sewage treatment plant is going to be you said a ten percent increase wouldn't isn't it appropriate to raise our rates slowly at this point instead of a big 10% increase to go towards the, the sewage treatment plant? Or am I off base with this? Am I? Uh, yeah, just to clarify, actually, that, that uh, I was just using that as an example. I don't know what the increase or what's going to come out of that. Um, but it is the requisition comes from the RDN and it's actually paid by the general fund. It's actually one of the items that I want to slowly transfer into the sewer fund because right now the general taxpayer is paying for the French Creek sewage treatment plant operating costs, not the sewer rate players where, where it really belongs. But it's a very large requisition right now. It's about $2 million a year. And if we put that in the sewer fund right now, the rates would have to go up probably 100% or more. So it's something that we need to phase into the sewer fund because the sewer rate payers really should be paying at least a part of that or all of that. Uh, so it's something that needs to be done over time because it's too big of a 
an adjustment. And what would happen is if we take that out of the general taxpayers, then those taxes would actually go down. If we did it all at once, their taxes would go down and the sewer fund rates would double or triple, right? Any further questions from anybody? Yes, Mr. Burden. Mr. Butterworth? I think we have, for parcel tax, around 230, I think, uh, collecting sewer parcel taxes right now, 230 properties. Uh, they're not all undeveloped. undeveloped. There's a few commercial where the sewer does not run by the property, and so they're on a parcel tax. Uh, well, actually, if it doesn't run by it, then they don't pay the parcel tax either. Um, a lot of them, when you get 235, it might be a new subdivision where it's not all connected yet, but it's subdivided. So. Okay, if I don't have any more questions, I'm going to call it, we just remind everybody that uh, not only do we have a council meeting on Monday night, everybody should be here at 5.30 because we're taking pictures, 5.30, before the council meeting. So, uh, and then we have another budget meeting on the night of, Wednesday night, the night of November the 9th. So on that note, I'm going to call for a mover and a seconder for an adjournment. Moved by Councillor Oates, seconded by Councillor Beal. All those in favor, thank you. We are adjourned, and thank you for the, the audience that attended.